It's one of the biggest mysteries in American history. What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Hard to believe, but it's been nearly five decades. We're talking 50 years since the labor leader vanished, believed to be on his way to a meeting with two top Detroit and New Jersey mobsters. Now, Fox's Eric Sean has spoken with the last living suspect in Hoffa's disappearance, and he does join us live to talk more about that. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Of course, Josh, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you again for being here. So what did that last living suspect have to say? You know, it is the greatest American mystery in, in our history. There's only one FBI suspect alive today. His name is Gabe Bergoglio. Back on July 30th, 1975, Jimmy Hoffa, the legendary Teamsters union leader, he wanted to get back into the Teamsters presidency, but the mafia was against it. So he was uh, thought he was going to a mob meeting with uh, a, a, a Detroit mob uh, boss, uh, Anthony Giacalone, as well as with Tony Pro Provenzano, who is a mob uh, uh, capo in New Jersey, as well as a Teamsters uh, union leader. And he disappeared from the parking lot of the Maccus Red Fox restaurant. Well, back then, uh, a FBI informant told uh, the FBI that Gabe Bergoglio, as well as his brother and uh, two other men, as well as Tony Pro, were involved and killed Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, that he thought that he killed Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, Gabe was summoned to the grand jury in 1975. If you read anything about this case, it says he took the fifth. He says he did not. He was in the lineup. No one picked him out. So he goes home to New Jersey in 1975. And if you see every t uh, news article, we've reported it on Fox News. Books all call him the second suspected hitman. He was either in the car picking him up. He was in the room when Hoffa was killed. He planned the murder. And Gabe Bergoglio tells me, no, it's not true. He's 84 years old. He wants to get the truth out. And this is all part of our uh, series on Fox Nation, our Fox streaming service, Riddle. The search for James R. Hoffa is the show. It's available starting today on Fox Nation. And this interview is on Fox Nation with Gabe, in which he describes what happened back then and how he was not involved at all. And it's old, old due to the mob informer, Ralph Picardo, who he says lied about that. And, and Picardo lied to get out of prison. And Picardo, it worked. He was put in the witness protection program. And, uh, and Gabe says that it was all a lie. The feds had nothing else. And all these decades since, he's been painted as being one of Hoffa's killers. It's damaged and hurt his family. He's stoic about it, uh, but he wants the truth at 84 years old to finally come out, Josh, that he says he had nothing to do with it at all. And experts and even a former federal prosecutor in charge of the Hoffa case in Detroit told us they do not think that Gabe killed Hoffa either, that it's all been false all these decades since 1975. Yeah, and you've covered this case extensively. That might be an understatement here, but what stood out to you the most about what he did have to say? What well, really stood out to me most, I think this story really is beyond the Hoffa story. It's how you can't fault the federal prosecutors at that time from taking what Rob Picardo said because they had nothing. So here's a mob guy in prison saying, oh yeah, they, they, I think they did this. You gotta, you gotta take it. That's why they impaneled the grand jury. But then what happens then? You are painted. It is really a story of someone who, in his view, is falsely accused, and he never gets any redress. There's no apology. There's no clearance. There's nothing. He, he is forever branded a, a killer of Jimmy Hoffa. He's been very stoic about it. He says, well, I can't do anything about it. It's really hurt his family. His kids had to live with this. Uh, they're now adults, uh, of course, uh, and it's been incredibly difficult for them. Uh, and that's what really stood out for me, that this is a very human story of what can happen in the criminal justice system, that do you have any redress uh, if you are falsely accused, uh, and how the media can take stories and take what Rob Picardo said. Because, if, if Josh, if you read what Picardo said, the FBI says, this is a quote, Picardo speculates that if Tony Pro, the mob boss, Capo, was involved, if he was involved, then it figures that the Andrettas and other pair of brothers and the Bergulios, including Gabe, was involved. Those, let's take those three words. Picardo speculates if 
at figures. Those are three guesses. The guy is guessing. He's not, he doesn't have hard facts. So based on those guesses, the federal government in 1975, they have nothing else. So they get the grand jury and subpoena the suspects, including Gabe, and then forever with the media and in, in books and, and articles and even in my programs in the past, because he did not talk. A few years ago, he said he didn't want to say anything. He, he, he shooed me away from his door, but he finally realized he wants to get his story out to let the world know that he did not kill Jimmy Hoffa. The uh, Detroit prosecutors believe that Hoffa was killed in Detroit and that the Detroit mob family did it. Uh, and we expect to get more about that, Josh, because James P. Hoffa, the former president of the Teamsters who had his dad's old job, uh, Mr. Hoffa now is writing a book, and I expect that in his book, which may be out in about a year or so, he will blame the Detroit mob and not Gabe Agulio and the New Jersey suspects for his father's killing. And a big question here, we're talking about five decades removed from this situation, but you still hear uh, Hoffa referenced almost on a daily basis. It is something that seems to come up time and time again, kind of like the mystery of, let's say, Amelia Earhart. Why is it that so many people are still so focused on this case? Well, I think it's so fascinating because it, it encompasses everything. You've got the union, you've got the power, you've got Washington, you've got you know billions of dollars in the Teamsters pension fund that was used to fund and build Las Vegas. You have the mafia, you have the mob, uh, and you've got the movies, The Irishman, for example. Frank Sherman, who I knew, who we reported on on Fox News and Fox Nation. That was a huge movie, the Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro movie. You have that claim. That, by the way, is not true. I knew Frank. Uh, I, I believe that is not true, that he killed Hoffa. He knew some of the facts. So I think everyone has been, you know, it is really is the last or one of the last remaining, you know, mysteries. A, a, a plus, you don't have a body. You know, maybe if he was discovered, it would have brought an end to it. Uh, but the, all the claims, he's buried in the Meadowlands. He's buried under the Pulaski Skyway in Jersey City. You know, he's uh, in Detroit. He's, you know, so, and there always continued new information and digs that the FBI conducts. Um, the feeling in Detroit is, is that Jimmy Hoffa was uh, snatched in the car, thought he was going to a mob meeting. He was shot at a uh, mobster's related house or a mobster's house and that he was quickly, then the body was taken to the central state's sanitation, which was a mob connected sanitation uh, place where they had a, uh, uh, they may have had an incinerator, they certainly had crushers and, and the body was incinerated into ashes. Um, but I think we'll get more, more on that with James P. Hoffa's book. And as it relates to Gabe, it's really a very human story. He wants to meet the Hoffa family. You have James P. Hoffa, you have Hoffa's daughter, Judge Barbara Cranser. She's a retired judge, 80 years old in St. Louis. Gabe it would like to meet them and talk to them and explain to them how uh, he says he had nothing at all to do. Even if you'd pick up any newspaper. Last year, Josh, there were two articles, three articles last year, saying Gabe was the office killer, that he planned the killing, that he was in on it and was part of the cleanup crew, suspected. I mean, this just keeps going on and on. And he did the interview with us for Fox Nation for our show, uh, Riddle, which is starts today, to try and, you know, clear up and, and, and clear up and he, he thinks the shame of this is that the FBI and everyone paid attention to Ralph Picardo, that mobster, and that kind of diverted the investigation into an area where it, if, if he had not emerged, maybe more focus would have remained on Detroit. All right. Eric Sean there with Fox News, a fascinating story, and we'll definitely be checking it out for sure. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here and help kind of break that down for us. All right, Josh. Good to see you. Thank you.